Good morning, folks. Key items to cover today in a big week in Observer World continues. Last night, we posted our open letter to the incredible Dr. Robin Bell, both here on YouTube and in letter form. Link to this critical video is found below. We've got weather, planetary science, and cosmology to discuss today, but we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day on the sun was relatively quiet. Filaments were active around the limb. Coronal hole is facing Earth today. While its fast solar wind is on the way here, things are currently quiet, anemically quiet in the solar wind actually, and in the geomagnetic conditions. Well folks, another super lightning upward Earth discharge event happened in the United States last night. We just shared this other one from two days earlier when we covered our record lightning stories, and I think we should all be on the lookout for more captures like this one into the future. Brain rests for a moment, and the eyes take over with NASA's new animations of alien sunsets on various planets and moons. More in-depth info and videos at the article link. And speaking of planets, folks close in hot Jupiters are still a bit of a mystery. A new one they have discovered with tests is helping them understand that the long period migration inward of the outer forming hot Jupiters actually happens pretty early. And since there are considerable formation issues in that close, we are left with questions about both formation and migration of the planets. Folks, I hope we remember this. The nonsensical twin black hole animations where in order to get anything to work at all in their simulation math, they had to ignore the central modulation point in the center. It's not a third black hole they want to show. They simply had to pretend the region didn't exist in space to get the model to work. So when I see an article claiming to have discovered a twin black hole system and their evidence is a strange pattern in the gamma emission from the single cosmic jet in the system, which should be their first clue, it should allow your imagination to say, well, couldn't there be other explanations for a gamma ray pattern from an active galactic plasma nucleus? Why, yes. Yes, there are. Folks, the Xenon-1T results we shared the other day have the researchers in a bit of a tizzy. But in addition to my words of criticism a few days ago, there is a serious problem with cosmology if you add solar axions of the nature they are suggesting. As in, nothing in the sky would look how it looks now. Too often we see the particle physics and the cosmological physics side of things ignoring one another, and this team is suggesting that's exactly what happened when the tritium contamination in the xenon tank triggered an electronic recoil in the medium. Let the universe speak. Up next, it's a bit of a star water smile moment as they are erasing the last little bits of doubt about the plutonian ocean beneath the ice. Back in 2013, we hypothesized that the chemistry of the surface implied that an ocean underneath could house life. And if we find it under the Antarctic ice here, Pluto thermal energy from within may make it seem easy out there by comparison. And the ice blocks the cosmic rays. Sticking with Pluto, and well folks, speculation be gone. The atmospheric collapse of the planet is published. In at most three years, 20% of its atmospheric pressure has been lost far more than can be explained by freezing atmospheric particles that fall to the ground. And since it is positioned in the direction of the center of the galaxy, we had hypothesized it might take the first major field or atmospheric collapse. And now, we wait for unusual storms, aurora, or atmospheric collapse at Neptune and Uranus. Folks, another reminder, Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille is on a tear, unraveling the Planck results. Tomorrow, he is scheduled to release the one proving they are pretty much literally just making stuff up at the highest level of astronomy. If you didn't catch our video last night, please do so. Hard to imagine a simpler way to lay it all out, which is why I did it that way. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.